Hello, today we're having a quick look at a CT Sumbo SSD. It's the 120 gig version, model number X3. Now, this is currently the, um, the cheapest 120 gigabyte SSD on Amazon for £14. So, you know, if you like me, I've never heard of them. And with a bit of digging, scanning this QR code that we have on the back here, we find pretty much just a blank website. So it doesn't bode well to begin with. So there's not a lot of information I can gain straight off the bat about this SSD. Now with a little bit more digging, I was able to locate the original website for this SSD. And it was basically just a um, off-the-shelf web shop selling these. Pretty cheap. Nothing too special. But, you know, it didn't look like they were going to be um, around for much longer. So I did a bit further digging. And that led me down a bit of a rabbit hole of strange um, addresses leading to supermarkets and other strange other things. But I was managed to track them down to... Well, I'll find their company name, which is um, Shenzhen TC Sunbo Technology Co Ltd. But it seems to be part of a larger organisation with a similar name of Sunbo Digital Technology. Going to their website, which is sunbotech.com, they only really seem to sell um, Bluetooth speakers, so not much to go on there regarding this bit of a mystery of an SSD. Managed to find that um, they have a new website. And it's tcsunbow.com.cn. Now, this looks um, a lot more professional. As we can see, it um, contains a lot more information about the actual SSDs themselves. Some nice imagery. Some nice instructions on how to install it, though that wouldn't be too difficult to work out anyway and you know, it looks generally quite professional more so than I can say about most Chinese companies I mean this one hasn't been around long they were set up in about 2015 with the SSD part being set up about 2016 so they're quite a new company so you know it's fine after using this one for a while and a few others of the, this type I mean, now, enough about the actual company that makes them. Let's talk about this actual SSD. Now, first off, the most important thing about it, and if you know much about SSDs, is the um, controller inside the SSD. Now, I'm not taking this one apart. I managed to work out it's using a Silicon Motion SM2258 controller. It's a good chance if you've ever owned an SSD in the last like five years, you've probably used this controller or a variation of. I mean, that controller is currently in the following SSDs in the current Crucial BX line. But this uses a slightly cut down version of the same controller and some of the older Corsair 4 series, as well as a few other brands that you might have heard of SanDisk, Kingston, Corsair, West Digital. AMD, Intel, HP, Levono, and a few other more lesser known Chinese brands that you may or may not have heard of. Now, what's interesting about this, you'd think they would have picked the cheapest controller going, which is what's in here, which is the, um, the same controller, which is the SM2258XT. And that is the same controller, but with no DRAM. So, as you can probably find some benchmarks online, it, it, it performs quite well. It's just you're going to get some slowdown in certain areas, you know, down to probably hard drive speeds. So, not, not great. Now, now, this one actually comes with DRAM. This SSD comes with 128 meg of um, cache so it should perform on par with the bx500 and we'll have a look at that in a minute 
but as you can see on Amazon, with Amazon's pricing, it's a good fair bit cheaper, especially if you're buying a lot of these. And at high capacities, the price gets even better. But is it really worth buying such a cheap, strange brand SSD? I mean, it does say it comes with three years warranty, but uh, will it be honoured if it goes wrong in, let's say, two years? I don't know. I mean, the company has only been around three years, really, so who knows? So, the most important thing, since we can't really check the reliability, let's see how well this actual SSD performs compared to let's say some other SATA free SSDs and some maybe some you know other brands let's say Samsung's M2 range and we can see how this matches up obviously it won't match the speeds of a, an M2 SSD but it's just nice to have a comparison so let's have a quick look as we can see straight away Sunbow is doing pretty good in terms of read times I mean it's pretty much up there the only thing that beats it is the uh, Crucial MX500. I mean, that's not by a massive amount. Though in terms of read times, um, it's, it's well behind pretty much everything, apart from the 8-year-old OCZ Agility 3, which is a slow SSD anyway. I mean, I couldn't get a reading on the MX100. I was getting some really strange speeds there, so I've omitted it for this particular run. Now if we move on to the, um, the 4K tests, here we have the 8Q 8 thread test and the Sunbow does once again surprisingly well for its price. The uh, Samsung and the Crucial MX500 beat it again and well the Samsung NVM M2 drive you know, it completely destroys it, but compared to everything else, it's doing, it's pretty good in terms of read. And write speeds, you know, they're not bad. Better than I um, thought they were, actually. So, the BX500 is doing well in this test, which is strange, since it's using the same controller, minus the DRAM. But, you know, it's, it's built by um, Micron, so there's probably some behind-the-scenes optimization going on there. Next, we've got the uh, single-threaded 32Q test. And once again, the read speeds aren't that bad. The Samsung Evo, both Samsung Evos, and the Crucial MX500 beat it again. Uh, and interesting here, the BX500 is lagging behind in terms of read. Though in terms of write... So where the disk drive seems to be a bit weak, it's pretty much the slowest in the test. So, well, I mean, it's not bad, but it's been definitely the slowest. Let's move on to the most intense test, single Q, single thread. The read speeds are, you know, about 30 meg. I mean, that's not bad. I mean, even the Samsung NVM is only doing 36, so I'd say that's a pretty good read. In terms of write speeds, 64 meg. Once again, not bad. As you can see, it's actually the best out of all of them, apart from obviously getting to the Samsung, which is quite surprising, really, because this really does stress most SSDs. So that's not bad. And beats the BX500 just by a little bit in both tests. But that's not bad for such a cheap SSD. So. In conclusion, for the price of this SSD, compared to similar ones on the market, it seems pretty good. I mean, you save yourself a good 20% over other brands, and it performs reasonably well. Okay, it's not the best SSD out there, but for a daily driver, if you're not um, using it to, let's say, create video content or anything too intense, you're not really going to notice. I mean, its write speed's not the best, but who really buys SSDs for the write speeds? It's the read that most people notice and feel in their day-to-day -day usage, especially with loading games and software. 
various other things. So yeah, I will certainly be buying more of these. I've already purchased four, and so far I've had no issues with them. And I would like to see what some of the bigger capacities of this model do. I've been a bit reluctant to buy them up to this point, but I'm certainly going to buy a few of those and see how they can compare. Because as you find sometimes bigger the um, drive, you get better performance. So yeah, well that's all I have to say about this cheap mystery SSD. And as always, if you like this video, subscribe, like, and leave a comment below. See you next time.